back. And let's find out if... Was it just this trailing slash that was caused the problems? Uh, let's see. Start transcribe. Processing. If it doesn't immediately fail, it's probably a good sign. Oh, never mind. <laughs> uh, what this time? All right. We. <sighs> okay, no, I'm not doing this again. Uh, let's go back to task worker. I think there are two things I want to do right now. One is I want to add some additional logging to the task worker. Um, we have some amount of tracing enabled so i may stop using print line for debugging and add some more traces one uh and two I th i'm going to change it to just have one task worker running um just to make it easier to find the right log so the that part the task worker i will say replicas is one um I, I want more than one, uh, probably honestly want more than two uh, to kind of parallelize uh, very, various processing tasks. But for right now, for debugging, I will want one. And then I think it's main. Um, yeah, because at some point I added like the tracing subscriber and all this stuff. So we should be able to use tracing rather than println. Uh, for things. Uh, debug. There we go. Um, and info. There we go. Uh, so what I do want to have though is when we I'm actually kind of surprised let's let's add another um, tracing info starting task yeah copilot's got it we'll do that uh, what else I was gonna say I'm surprised that uh, we don't see any kind of tracing from the request client um, oh, let me go back. Actually, how are we constructing the client? Oh, here. Um, yeah, I don't know about a timeout, but I think I there should be a couple of things we can do here. Ah, dot. What I can't. I can't see options. Ah, it's because it doesn't exist. <laughs> How about dot? Um, do, 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 own, delete, request. Um, I think, there we go, builder. There we go, that's what I'm missing. Uh, I wanted to do something like adding info about the user agent. It's probably a good thing. That'd be cool to. Um, what, is that is that really a thing? No, probably not. Um, what am I doing elsewhere? There we go. Ooh, uh, something I want to do though, now that I'm thinking about it, now that I'm looking at this, uh, we'll, we'll add a thing to the backlog to make that value be configurable. Uh, make client, uh, HTTP client, client, 
user agent uh, be configurable. And or use uh, program version. It's probably a good thing. Uh, let's call this an enhancement. Uh, uh, let's create it. There we go. All right, that'll be in there. Cool. So, um, where? Here we go. Connection verb is false. Name of this option will emit log messages at the trace level for read and write options on the connections. So I probably don't want that. At least I didn't want it here. I, I was kind of thinking maybe I would want that here, but that's fine. Uh, I don't I don't need that level of granularity, but I would like to have a tracing line that would be like uh Huh. Maybe I just want that here. Maybe I want to say got response JSON down here, but got response here. Um, I wonder if this will let me see like the status code. That's kind of what I'm, I'm curious about. Okay, that seems good. Let's build that really quick. Um, so, I think we have some issues caused by the refactor from last week to consolidate all of our various API microservices into a single crate, into a single um, HTTP um, service that has all of our different endpoints in it, which at least makes the build go faster. Uh, here wrapped up in, in a in a Docker container versus like half a dozen or more, whatever it was. Um, so we've seen a couple of issues with um, specifics of how the HTTP paths have changed. So we'll see if this turns up any anything. Once we get this working, then we can turn uh, attention towards re-implementing the PR for chained task, uh, chained tasks, which is uh, what this PR uh, number 77 was intended to do. It's now quite out of date. It has conflicts because this was before the refactor, the reorganization, what have you. Maybe, maybe not. Let's let's not call it a refactor, given the 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 lack of any kind of testing or unit testing uh, in this code base. Um. That is something maybe at some point I will want to think about doing more is uh, tests. Tests, especially for like a lot of our utility code. Maybe. thinking about, as an example, something that uh, probably would have been caught when um, I 
let's see, where would that have been? Right, so we have a detect segment endpoint here. It's ca called by the front end. And then this endpoint builds a request somewhere in here. Uh, well, it was actually the, it was in silence detection, it was transcription, but it's the same structure, right? Where we have a detect endpoint that takes this input and it builds a task like this. So first and foremost, we have that kind of this data transformation relating some state, some configuration really, uh, which I, I am going to be changing around how we're loading config. Uh, but then it, it it's pulling data from this detect input struct and it's transforming it into a JSON representation of a task, right? So this could be a separate function that does this work because there is an issue, right? If state that this API base URL has a trailing slash, then this URL will have two slashes. Uh, and while a server might choose to ignore that, uh, ours didn't. And so maybe that was something that, that could have been tested. There could have been a unit test around that uh, behavior. Uh, and I, I bet there's a bunch of things like that scattered around things like this um, as well. All right, so now uh, let's go back here and pull up Docker. And so now we have just task worker two that's running and I'll go back to the app and I'll start a job and a bunch of stuff happened. Uh, resolving host API trace. Okay. This is us. This is the task worker talking to the API service. headers where's our tracing um, is it got response here we go to be yeah 404 status so we made a request to detect segment and we got a 404. Uh, we made a request to API port 3000, detect segment. So are we missing a route? So let's first cl uh, collapse the nested routes here for records. Okay, so we have stream ingestion, tasks, transcription, detect segment, transcription detect, silence detection detect segment, silence detection detect. Okay. Uh, right, 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 right. Okay, so before these were on separate, like there was a separate service for each of these, right? So um, if you were making a request from the front end, you were request was being routed through Nginx. And so you would need to make a request to slash API slash silence detection slash detect. And if you were trying to call the segment one, which you wouldn't normally from the front end, then it would be slash segment on the end of that. But that first two segments of the path, API and silence detection, were getting stripped off by Nginx. And so the service of the back end, so the Rust code that was actually defining that route would only have detect segment and detect. So um, we're missing something here. And I think where we have to make the change is in um, all right, it's the same thing, right? So we're doing transcription, but it's the same structure. 
transcription detect segment transcription detect so when we refer to this here in silence detection and transcription to rs and our handlers the structure of the url needs to be like this and this Uh, and again, these things could definitely be extracted out into uh, a like implementation of from or try from or something like that. And we can have unit tests because it is not safe to construct a URL by just string concatenating like this um, without some safeguards on you know this value at least. Um, but. For the here and now, that should fix it. Are there probably other things that are broken? That uh, could be. I wonder if I have any other places that refer to uh, state at this base URL. Just oh, in here as well. Uh, right. So this is this is gonna be YouTube. YouTube. YouTube uh, upload task. It's it's not uh, API YouTube upload task because the API part was what I decided that I will continue to have Nginx strip off for the, the front end. Um, just because. Because they, they all, like everything served from main.rs, the, the other main.rs, uh, and <laughs> API, uh, they're all, they all start with API, so why would I include that in the wrap? Just have Nginx uh, deal with that. All right, so will it work? Start transcribe. It's now processing. It didn't immediately. Uh, Uh, bail out because it didn't get a 404 it's waiting um, so th this is kind of the reason for this task service because what I decided to do uh, for good or ill <laughs> what I decided to do was that some of the microservices would have um, endpoints that would be would potentially take a long time to process um, you know, minutes, many minutes, half an hour even. Um, and because this is all happening on the back end, that kind of lo long-standing request is, is kind of okay. Um, alternatively, um, one could make separate task workers. Like think about having um, separate workers for different kinds of things, or, you know, you could like, we, we, we now have an API service and a task worker service. You can imagine all of the background task work for silence detection and all that stuff could live in the task worker and be processed, like live there. But then you have like details about both things in both crates. So maybe you have a third crate that has like common logic. Maybe you have separate crates for like the logic for doing these things that both the API and the task worker uh, import in and are reused that way. I just noticed. <laughs> I'm looking at the transcript and I was like, figuring out what, what am I talking about? Uh, so we got eight old people. That's not necessarily a good thing. Uh, I, I don't know if that's what I said or if that's a bad transcription. <laughs> what am I talking about? I think this is from a Mind Over Magic stream. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, Mind Over Magic. Cool. 
All right, but it works. Like, so we can look at here and we can see, hey, it's processing. Um, okay, so that, that's all well and good. Let's, um, what did we change here? So we changed task API to be API. Uh, we changed this to remove the trailing slash. Uh, changed this, let's change this back to two, 12. Um, let's, let's up it to three, I think at this point, that'll be good. Uh, YouTube RS, we fixed this path, we fixed this path, fixed this path, test that JSON. I stripped out all these old can, um, uh, services that don't exist because now it's just API. Darker Compose, we just looked at that. Uh, okay, so let's see, Copilot, can you generate a cool update API endpoint URLs and code changes? Yeah, something like that. Um, I think I can just push to main. Nope. I've <laughs> oh, wait, no, no, there's, there's stuff to pull? Or have I forbidden myself from pushing directly to main? Okay, no, I've, I, 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 for, I forbade myself, so um we'll create a branch uh url fixes uh yeah create the branch cool uh we're still on main though and what i want to do is i want to remove the last commit from here Uh, I don't want to revert it because that'll just add another commit. I want to um, delete it. Reset current branch to previous commit. Uh, this is effectively doing git reset dash dash hard head uh, carrot. Reset will leave changes in the working branch. I don't care about doing that. We'll do this. Uh, now what's hilarious is that if somehow URL fixes <laughs> didn't have the things, uh, there we go. All right, there we go. Okay, well, yeah, we got all this up. Publish the branch. There we go. Haven't seen that background in a little bit today. Uh, let's see, back to GitHub. Okay, that doesn't need to be in the description. Cool, so uh, I think the next thing to do is going to be to start a new branch for basically re-implementing this work for chain tasks. Um, I don't think it's worthwhile necessarily to try to uh, rescue it, to, to kind of work from there. We'll just work from main, uh, which eventually the work that I just opened in a PR will, will land in. Um, but I don't think there's anything that I'll be working on here that needs that right now until I start, you know, wanting to test it. So that's fine. Let's create a branch. I'm going to call it uh, Sabin issue uh, 76 2. And uh, we're going to just kind of roll through and redo the changes here. 
Uh, so task worker lib. Interesting. Why is this an error now? Hmm? Expected a string reference found string. Okay, so I think if only I could type. Are you happy with that? Oh no, that's that's the wrong one. It's this other argument here that needs to match. Yes, no, maybe. Why are you unhappy? <laughs> Arguments to this method are, yeah. Uh, H set key field value. I am confused. What if what if I just remove this? Can you just do that? No, no, no. From Redis value. What if, what if I did, just like figure it out for me, huh? How many, how many arguments are supposed to be there? Uh, two, three, four, yeah. Okay, it's fine now. Why didn't I do this in the first place? I'm working too hard. All right, cool. Uh, so, can we uh, fold? So we're looking for the task uh, struct, and we're going to add our new next task struct after it. Uh, it's a little confused about what happened there. Hold on, let's, let's expand that. There we go. And then, oh, I see. I somehow grabbed an extra. Okay, whatever. Anyway. It, it's here now. All right, and then option box next task. So I don't think that's necessary. So the reason next task has an option and box next task is because it's self-referential. So the box is kind of a a... I don't think it necessarily works exactly like, this, exactly like this, but think about it like a, well, if you're familiar with C or C++, maybe think about it like a pointer. <laughs> like it is a fixed size thing that can reference to a next task. If it didn't have this box here, uh, we would be saying that next task needs a, an amount of memory to also hold the next task, and that's a contradiction, right? Right, we need some number of bytes to hold the values here. Like how wide is the struct? And if I do option next task, we need to be able to fix, fit the number of bytes for our next task inside of a next task. So that's why box. Um, that's not a problem with task. We can directly hold optionally a next task. All right, now a bunch of stuff breaks because um, reasons because we're trying to construct a task and we're not providing a next task so I think for this I need to implement from hash map for next task as well and then what we'll do is we'll um, we'll do a thing. So impl from hash map. Yeah, there you go. All right, what what are you gonna do? Hold on, let's let's leave this. We're we're already diverging from the previous implementation. 
uh, because I think this will be good, right? So a next task has basically everything the task does, except it doesn't need a last updated or run after. We're not gonna support chaining tasks where subsequent tasks have predefined run afters. I don't think that will be necessary. So think of the next task kind of like a template. In fact, maybe that, that could be a different way of thinking about what this struct is. It's like a task template. Um, because it doesn't have a key or an ID. It has the minimum information to define what the task is without... Uh, I kind of like that. I kind of like that as a, as a conceptually. I may come to regret this later. <laughs> Um, but yes, because the task template includes the next task, we can we can chain them, right? Uh, as far as I know, there's no way to like define one struct that is based on, like you can't do task extends task template. I'm pretty sure in Rust, I don't think that's a thing. I don't think so. Uh, you know, before I say something, <laughs> definitively Rust uh, extend struct. Oh, I've been here before. Rust does not have struct inheritance of any kind from 2015. Is it okay? From 2022 is probably more current. It's probably also going to say the same thing. No, it's not possible to extend struct in Rust. You can do sorts of sorts of uh, enum wrapping things and, and various things. Uh, yeah, it's not idiomatic, right? And that that is the thing that trips me up as uh, as a long time TypeScript person. It's trying to do uh, Rust stuff, but that's fine. Okay, so we have a test template, and the idea will be that we want to be able to take a hash map um, for this and we want to turn it into a task template right so we want to supply URL we'll say it's in the URL key payload uh, will be from parsing uh, JSON value um, actually <clears throat> excuse me actually there was something I took a note on there's a try from uh, trait uh, so rather than using dot expect here, I think we can do try from the may trivially succeed may also need special error handling. Yeah. It's intended for perfect conversions to so the try from trait informs the programmer when a type conversion could go bad unless them decide how to handle it, right? Try from t for u implies try into u for t. Try from is reflexive. Nice. Try from t for t is implemented. It cannot fail. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Okay. So let's try. Uh -huh. Try from. And let's see what this does. Maybe Copilot will even give us a good implementation here. Okay, so we're gonna say we're gonna have a type error. I I I believe this could be legitimate. <laughs> uh, we'll we'll say we'll have a, a like a string error describing what the problem was. It looks like there are two other uh, possible things Copilot has for us. So we'll check those out in a second. Uh, so this grabs URL from data. Uh, or okay, missing URL question. Interesting, missing payload, missing data key, missing title. Next task, if we have it, or if we don't have it, then none. If we do have it, then we box a another try from. Okay, so we, we recur. Uh, what's the difference between these? We have different messaging of the error. 
And this one doesn't use clone. I'll uh, use clone here to make this more concise. Third implementation um, has clone here. Interesting. Let's 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 accept this one and see. Is this valid? Uh, well, we have extra color brace there. So that's cool. So that seems to be what we need. And we do test template try from next task, which is this hash map that we get from this next task, which is the ne next task key from the data. So we're, we're, we're kind of defining a relationship between the hash map uh, that we might be parsing from or we might, we might be getting this from, um, from Redis, right? And then uh, this is gonna be different. So I wonder, uh, something I rarely do, what we can try here is, uh, let me save this really quick. Let's, okay, if we have a next task in the data, we will get the hash map from the JSON string and we will try from. Okay, so what I wanna do is I want to ask uh, Copilot, uh, rewrite this to implement the try from trait instead of from. Okay, there we go. Had to finish thinking. So now this is this is wrong. At least, yeah, because it still expects. Toggle changes. Oh, I see, we can get uh, kind of this to few. Uh, that's not super helpful. Uh, I think I'm just going to discard it and I'll implement it myself. Yep. There we go. Is that how we do that? I want to do maybe data.get. Yeah, or okay. So what, is, what does this or okay actually do? Transforms the option T into a result TE. Map TE, T. Uh, mapping sum to okay and none to error. Uh, arguments passed to okay or are eagerly evaluated Uh, so the, the argument here is the error string, right? And then use to disable the operation for this value or propagate a value back to the caller, uh, right? So basically if we get an error here, like in other words, if, oops, <laughs> if, if this is none, then, uh, so this this is an option, right? It's either some string or it's none. If it's none, then this produces an error, self to error, uh, or a result err, right? That wraps the string, and this causes 
flow of control to exit try from uh, if that is an error. Otherwise, it unwraps the OK. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah. Magic. Okay. Uh, so I think what I want to do is I'm going to continue this uh, idea of like prepping all the all of the values here. Like let he is like that. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Let payload like that. Uh, let data key. Yep, checks out. Uh, key ID. We want title. Data get title. Unwrap or. Yeah, that's what we had down here anyway. Pressing, uh, oh, this is wrong too. Yeah, okay, so how are we doing this? Hmm. Yeah, use the, hold on, very good, very good hint here. Uh, use the, oh, no, lost, oh, there it is. Use the question mark operator to extract value propagating result error value to caller right so we do want this right but then it's a result unknown uh hey ninja juice how's it going mm. i personally am thinking about lunch here soon. I guess uh, we can also think about who we want to raid today. Shortly. Why is this unknown? So from STR, result T. Um, payload. What is what is the type of payload supposed to be? Surty JSON value. Okay, so why isn't Surdy JSON from STR giving us the expected type? Can I just do this? All right, no, no, I need gotta do that. There we go. Okay, that seems to be the right thing. So do the same thing down here. But the, the, the payload. There we go. Uh, oh, what am I up to? Uh, well, you know, this is this, this, this is the same project that I've been working on um, every Sunday, really. But it's uh, currently trying to make this handle. Cases where I want to have like um, I want to trigger like a, a background job a task and then when it's done I want it to like then in turn start a, another task a different task to like do the next thing uh, and kind of chain them together so I'm I'm rewriting I'm kind of cleaning up this code oh yeah yeah no worries no worries um, the the context is this glowing telegram project that's on on YouTube uh, it's on GitHub. It's on YouTube too. Uh, but it's this this glowing Telegram project uh, on my GitHub. 
that is all about helping me process my stream recordings and turn them into YouTube videos and like keep track of what's uploaded and do like um, speech to text transcription and analysis and trying to like help me do editing and uh, you know, all, all of that, all, all of the things. Some AI stuff, GPT-4 stuff um, for summarization um, and this is this, this thing that I'm working on right now specifically is like, um, because sometimes things fail and when they fail, I want only the part that failed to retry. And then once it finishes, you know, to pick up on the next thing and, and carry it on without me having to go back and like, and manually fix thing, fix things up. It's bad enough that like when you upload a video on YouTube, there is not a way to automate the uh, like the end screen, the thing that comes up at the end of the video that has like, click this to, you know, take the suggested video or click this to, you know, check out the, the playlist or click this to subscribe. There isn't a way to like automate adding that. You have to click into each video and set it, but most everything else is automatable. So I have most of that done. It just fails sometimes and it needs to be able to like carry on with itself. Uh, all right, so what is the pro, oh right. We need to wrap this in an okay. Okay, that's, that's the fundamental issue here is that now this function, this try from, either returns an okay or an error. Uh, expected, okay, so we're missing a question mark there. Question mark operation, plus performance conversion on the error value using the from trait. Um, why not work? Okay, this is a result value error. Oh, I see. Uh, so we need like a, okay. Uh, no, okay or? That's not a thing that exists here. How do we solve that on the other one? Oh, we did. <laughs> it's just wrong. Um, shoot. Okay, so we have to just rewrite this to be like match this value. I don't care about the tracing. We'll just do it this way. Sure. Does that make it happy? I think so. All right. I'm I'm not super happy about the fact that like we have a little bit of copy and paste here, but at least they're right next to each other. So there's that. Uh, I could also move these things up, but they're fine. They're fine here. Um, yeah, because we don't, we never have a thing where we like panic in this. Like we can always arrive at a value to return. That That's the main thing I'm trying to avoid in this code uh, because this code could be used in multiple places and it wouldn't necessarily always make sense to panic if things can't be parsed correctly. So uh, that's why I wanted to use, start using try from. Uh, now I've broken all the code. <laughs> Uh, also, this is wrong. Um, match. Yep. And this needs a semicolon there. Yes. All right. So in terms of the local changes, that should be good. Um, now all the other functions here are broken and that's what we're going to fix next time. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's, let's save 
current progress. What 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 does Copilot think I've done here? Uh, nope, that's really out of date. Sometimes it does this, right? It just like describes something that happened a bunch of time ago. It has nothing to do with anything. Um, add. Uh, okay, so there we go. And I'll publish that branch. Um, and we'll get a PR open it like a draft PR for this. I'll keep this one around as well for reference because we're not quite done bringing over um, work. There we go. Uh, closes or fixes or whatever the thing is. Uh, 76. Chain tasks. Make that a draft pull request. There we go. Replace the 77, close the 76. Um, and it's out of date with main because our other PR got merged. All right. So who are we going to raid?